Hi, I'm Abby. I'm Top Nut Stitcher. We're going low tech, low effort setup today because um, if I don't do this right now, I never will. And I want to update you on stitch shenanigans and things before I like forget everything that happened in my life the last month. Jam is over here. You can't see him because it's sunny outside. And normally I would do a different setup because this lighting is not going to be great. And I didn't make my bed and all that, but the rest of my room is a disaster. So that's why we're here. I'm going to talk a little bit about stitch shenanigans and unpack some things. I didn't unpack until this morning. I got home Sunday night and it's now Saturday morning. So I've been living in a state of chaos for the whole week and it's been really distressing. Um, I recently uncovered one of the secrets to adulthood, which is if you unpack your suitcase immediately upon returning from a trip, your life is infinitely better and easier and just wonderful. I just started doing that a few years ago and it's like totally changed my life. It takes like 10 minutes, but I never did that before. I would just live out of suitcase for like three weeks. Anyway, I got home at like midnight on Sunday. I was too tired to do any such thing. And so I just left my bag in the middle of the floor and then there were things all over and it's messy and my stitching's all disorganized because I was like digging through stuff trying to find what I wanted to take with me to work on and I left it in disarray and now I have more stuff and it's just a problem. So we're gonna kind of go through that, this mess that you can't see luckily, uh, while we talk today. And I apologize in advance for the lighting but I don't apologize because you don't have to be here. So it is what it is. Uh, I don't really have a plan for this video, we're just gonna chat and see what happens and that's that. Uh, I just got back from Stitch Shenanigans in Arizona, retreat hosted by McKenna, Stitching and Sequins. It was everything I dreamt of and more. All my favorite people for the most part were there um, and it was just amazing. It's so amazing how even the people I hadn't actually met in real life, um, it's just so nice. It was like, I feel like I already knew them. Even people I didn't really like know, like, um, Mare Bear, uh, who I'd like watched a couple of her videos. She's, oh, there's Jam. Come here. Come here. Come where they can see you. Okay. He's being elusive. Oh, there he is. Oh, he's so cute. Okay. He, I'll, I'll sit here so you can see him. Okay. Maybe not. Um, I hadn't actually like talked to her much. I'd watched a couple of videos, but oh my goodness, she's basically just me, except she lives in Washington and she's way cooler than me because she like goes to raves and stuff. But anyway, it was wonderful. Everyone was wonderful. It was amazing. Um, the hotel we were at was fantastic because there was a ton of great restaurants and things in walking distance and it was sunny and gorgeous and life was good. Um, I didn't get to talk to everybody. Hello and I love you to anyone who was there who I didn't get to speak to. It's, you know, the kind of thing where, like, yeah, we're all super stoked to see each other. Um, but it's also even people that you know and have talked to or maybe know or love what they're working on. Like, it can be really intimidating to go up to people and especially to, like, interrupt them. Like, I don't, I don't want to be, like, a nuisance. So, um, I kind of rotated between sitting at my table sitting at other tables, wandering around, introducing myself, interjecting myself, making a fool of myself, all those things. Uh, and it was just wonderful. So go watch other people's recap videos because they'll probably give you more information. I'll sprinkle in some stories as I go. Maybe, if I remember, maybe not. And let's just, let's just start talking about all the piles of stuff near me. Um, where should we start? Well, let's start, I guess, I have a bag of Stitch Nanigan stuff. Okay, McKenna had a thrifted item table and she, there were some items that she had purchased at thrift stores for like finishing and you know, different needlework stuff. And you could make a donation to a hospice charity and then you got a nice thrifted item. Um, and I didn't really need any like cool finishing things, plus I didn't wanna have to take it back with me. But the first couple of days we were there, it was kinda chilly and I wasn't super prepared for that. Um, normally I travel with like a million layers and like a blanket scarf and I forgot my blanket scarf. So that was what did me in because I didn't have enough layers. 
and it was just like really brisk in the mornings and evenings and like I think it was the first day that we were there maybe the second day it was like upper 60s for most of the day and like kind of breezy um which is what I'm used to here in the Bay Area but um it was just it was rather cold and so luckily there was a sweatshirt on the thrifted item table and I snagged it up for a, a nice donation oh I got some coffee on it um, and then Mary and I traded off wearing it because we were both cold and uh, I think Mitchy Mitch stitch anytime one of us is wearing it we would get compliments on like how well we could pull it off but how um, you know others might feel a little silly in it whereas I was just like living my best life in this sweatshirt so much cross stitch so little time and it is an extra large but fit me very nicely um, and it was brand new like it was all fuzzy and wonderful inside so Mary and I are gonna make this our traveling sweatshirt and send it back and forth and just love our cross stitch lives I'd be wearing it right now but it's a little toasty today but it's it's the greatest thing um, I will definitely be rocking this at StitchCon so Mary I'll send it to you maybe after StitchCon if that's cool can't do anything about it so um okay so that was one thing oh and then um McKenna had you know very generously allowed some makers of stitchy items to bring some wares for little pop-up shops uh so like delicious delicious Jen brought some needle minders and some bags Diana had some bags there was a woman with these really gorgeous scissor fobs I'm sure there were others that I missed, um, but yeah, there were just, oh, like Arlene had some of her patterns and I forget what else, but it was really great because then um, you could like see the items in person, which was really dangerous because then I bought more things than I normally might have. Um, you could save on shipping and these wonderful creators got, you know, some, some sales. Um, and so I don't have the skills to make like project bags and things like that but I do have the skills to shop at Target and Arlene recently showed one of these tote bags that have been in the dollar spot at Target and you can totally stitch on that and so she got one of these she stitched a motif from one of her designs um, it has like a really thin cheap lining in it so she just like tore the seam and then is gonna sew it back up but you could very easily like replace that with something better um, and I think Arlene said it comes out to like a seven count or something maybe like five count I don't know it's they're really really big um, so I was at Target getting a couple last-minute things for my trip and I saw that they still had a ton of these so I picked up a handful um, to sell at the retreat for those who either aren't near Target or whose Target didn't have any because um, the dollar spot items you can't buy online um, you can only get in the store so I had a few tote bags and a few of the little cosmetic cases um, for sale and so that was very handy because it made me feel like a uh, cool creative talented person even though I just I just went to Target um, I still have a couple available so message me if you are interested and I'm happy to be your Target supplier uh, I think I sold I had a couple extras that I sold on stash and loading and I bought them like last week at Target so I feel I guess it was like a week and a half ago two weeks they might still have some so maybe I'll do some Instagram polling and see if anybody else needs a bag because it's awesome and it's it is like a cheap bag it's from the Target dollar section it wasn't a dollar but um, but it's like a nice size and it feels pretty like the exterior feels very sturdy and great interior needs some work but it's a, it makes for a nice stitchy tote bag um, that I will definitely be using for all future stitchy meetups okay what else happened at Stitch Um when we arrived we got a little project bag uh, with like our itinerary and information inside of it and I was helping McKenna set up and uh, I forget who was 
I forget who was setting these out with me. Um, but I was like, oh, there's red, yellow, green, and blue. Obviously those are like standard colors, but obviously those are Hogwarts colors. And so I of course grabbed uh, green for Slytherin because in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature, I'm in Slytherin and we are crushing it. What up snakes? Um, so that was great. And then I also was helping to set up the freebie table and that meant I got some first dibs. Um, which I didn't, I didn't really, I mean, we were setting up, so I didn't take time to like look through patterns and stuff, but there was a Q-snap in a box of things that McKenna had, um, donated to the table and I have two Q-snaps and I constantly am like, I really should invest in a couple more because that would be really handy and I just never do. And so picked one up and this is my favorite configuration is to combine, um, Maybe they sell them like this, but how I did it when I raided my mom's stash was combine an 8x8 and an 11x11 for a handy 11x8 because this fits in all of the like standard size project bags that are rectangular and it's just handy. So it fits really nicely in this bag, for example. Um, and then we also got a little Pepe, which I'm, I have to keep hidden from Jam because he'll totally steal it. Oh, he's backwards. Oh, Pepe. Jam. I shouldn't do this. Taunt him. He's ignoring me. Whatever. Um, so I kind of want to turn him into like a zipper pull or a scissor fob. I'm a little nervous of like breaking him if I make him into a zipper pull, but I just think that'd be really cute on like a Halloween themed bag and project, which I don't have, but maybe someday. Anyway, that was that. Um, and then she had other little gifties sprinkled throughout the weekend. Um, I don't think I have any of, well, I might have a couple of them in here. We'll find out. Um, Jam has already stolen my little cactus pin cushion, so I had it sitting on a shelf and he saw it and just took it and ran off. To, he has, whenever he is like playing with, um, like chasing something and then he finally like catches it, like a toy, we don't have mice, <laughs> not live mice. Um, he takes it and he like runs to this one corner of the house and it's like his spot, like his hiding spot, his stakeout spot. And so we, normally it's just toys or like sometimes he'll steal socks, like he's figured out how to open the drawers of dressers and stuff. Um, but he took my cactus and I heard him like playing with something but I didn't, I couldn't tell what it was and I was like, oh, that's fine, whatever. It was my cactus. And so luckily the only thing that happened was that there's like a little uh, plastic flower pin thing on it and that had fallen off, but he didn't eat it, which was good. So I rescued it, I put it on a tall shelf and that's that. He's back in his window. He loves looking out the window. He's so cute. Oh, jam. Um, let's see what else is in this bag. Um, I did go to the attic and I did buy a couple things, but I have no idea where they are. So let me, let me find out. Um, I did visit the freebie table a lot throughout the weekend and picked up a few things because, um, I can't help it. Um, I just can't. I just, I'm not, I'm not sorry about that. Uh, oh, one of the other... Uh, McKenna gifts that we got. We got to pick out a color of Karen Impressions. Uh, that's like a nice, very great, it's like purple, blue, orange, all in like really muted. It's a nice earthy mix. Uh, and then there were some extra and so on the last day um, Cal walked around with Box and I got this nice variegated gold. Um, I feel like I might have gotten, grabbed one other or someone brought me one. I don't know. It'll turn up somewhere. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. let's see I snagged a hoop off the freebie table because um, I was going to do a hoop finish for a project I can't remember and the hoop that I got for it to frame it in was too big so that one might be the right size it might not be oh and then we had a little stitch and give and um I made a little piece and framed it and put in some little goodies and I didn't actually find out who got mine so 
if you got mine, let me know. Um, but for the stitch and give, we like put all of our things on a table and then we had it, we each got a, got a number and then, uh, Cal and Ayrton were calling numbers and we could go up and pick a bag. Um, so it was great cause it was like a pretty quick process. Uh, it was a little chaotic, but not, not too bad. And then after we had all opened our things, McKenna had us put our, what we had received up on the table so we could all see all of the, the stitched items, which was very handy because, uh, I mean, I've only done this at one other, one other retreat, but it was kind of, you know, throughout the weekend we would kind of be like, oh, this is your, your, uh, like, you know, stitch, what is, um, smalls exchange, I think is what the kids usually call it. Um, but it's just kind of hard to like see and appreciate everyone's hard work. And so it was, it was just lovely to be able to ooh and ah over them. Um, and so I was lucky enough to get, uh, the bag that, uh, Cassie brought. It was, um, not, I don't have it with me. I gifted it to McKenna because it was like made for her. Um, it's not like child appropriate to share, so I, I won't. Um, but inside there were a few little goodies, which I have like dispersed all over the place. And this cute little pillow finish. Look how cute it is on this little bird. I love this color so much. Teal and red is like, it's one of my favorite combos. Um, and this is beautiful. And I always struggle with, I've only done one pillow finish, but I have like plans of doing more. Um, and I always struggle with like, I don't have fancy trim to like put around the sides. And so like, how do you make it look like a nice finished product? You do this action. Um, so it's the same fabric that's on the back over just part of it and then a little nice trim and it looks so cute and I'm very impressed and I have to figure out where I can set this up where Jam can't steal it. Um, so that's my next project to figure out is where to put it, but it's so, I love it so much. Um, and there are some other little goodies, some thread, some candy, which I ate immediately, um, plus the bag that just had us all entertained for the rest of the weekend. Um... So thank you, Cassandra. If you don't watch her, go check her out. I forget what her channel is called. Maybe just Cassandra Martin. I don't know. Maybe I'll remember to link her below. She's great. You know. Um, okay, let me get out the rest of this stuff. Ba -ba -ba -ba. I did get this cute little keychainy bag thing from Mitchy Mitch Stitch. She brought from. I don't remember if she said she got this in Australia or in Singapore. Um, she had some little gifty souvenir things from Singapore that she brought. Um, it's so cute. You know me. I love whales. It's a little zipper pouch. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think it could be a really cool little, it has a little lobster claw thing. And so I was thinking, like, oh, wouldn't this be handy to use as, like, a little travel stitchy bag where I can put my scissors and my orts in there. Well, I clip my scissors on, but to keep them safe for travel, I could tuck them inside. Um, and then just have this cute little bag. So I don't know if that's what I'm going to do or if I'll just turn it into like a coin purse or if I'll just admire it. Um, I can't leave it out because Jam will take it, but it's adorable and it makes me super happy and I love it. It looks really good next to this pillow. Uh, ba -ba. Okay, let me show you the handy little bags that I purchased from my friends. So the very talented, delicious Jen, as I mentioned, brought some bags. Um, now please note, I did not bring jam to Stitch Nanigans, but the project bags that I did take with me were covered in jam fur. And so, my project bags that I'm about to show you are covered in jam fur, even though he has not seen them. They've been safely ensconced in a bag. Whatever. Um, I got this fabulous little Harry Potter bag. Oh, you know me. I love Harry Potter. Um, I have kind of, I have seen Jen in person with like a personal stash of these square bags that she makes because square Q snaps. 
And I was like, that's so cool. I love my 8x11 Q-snap, but sometimes you don't need that big of a Q-snap. And a big 8x11 bag for an 8x8 Q-snap is just annoying. And I've, I'm sure other people sell square bags, but I've only really seen Jen do it. Uh, so I got this wonderful Harry Potter fabric. Uh, she has these fancy little, oh, little labels, so official. Um, so obviously I needed that one because um, Harry Potter and School of Magical Stitches. Duh. And then she also had, oh, yes, lovely Matryoshka. Um, I love it, especially because they're like multicultural, which I've never seen before. It's very, very cool. It's got this lovely blue fabric lining. It's a vinyl front, which is my first ever vinyl fronted project bag. Um, which I really love because I didn't, I thought it would maybe make me feel like it was more cluttery and I don't know, like messy looking because you could see the, the mess inside, but obviously that's beautiful. That's my moon dance, Kathy Barrick. I took this with me to StitchCon and I think this is the only project I didn't actually work on, but it belongs perfectly in this bag. And I also got this glitter leaf minder from Jen. And then I got this fabulous scissor fob from the freebie table. Uh, is it Heather or Ashley? I want to say Heather, but it might have been Ashley. I'm sorry. I forget. I'll try to find out and link it. She made these beautiful little scissor fobs and had them on the freebie table. So I picked out this one um, because I liked the colors. And then I thought it went very well with this bag and this project. And it does. So thank you very much, Heather. Ashley, I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I've never, I don't like having scissor fobs on my scissors because I find that it just gets annoying. And also I have like a, you know, a dozen pairs of scissors and I never seem to actually have them with me when I'm, when I'm like stitching on something. So like this morning I was stitching and I couldn't find them and I had a nail file and I would just like sawed my thread off with the nail file instead. So, um, maybe I should be more into scissor fobs so I don't lose my scissors as easily. But I love having it as a super cute fancy zipper pull. Um, so I got those two bags from Jen. I had to stop myself from buying more. She had like little accessory bags that went along with them too and I was like, no, restrain yourself. You are not made of money. Cut it out. Uh, and then Diana also, it is kismet, also brought some bags to sell and um, I, I think Michelle was looking through the stack of bags and she's, she said cats and I was like, what? Uh, so I claimed this before anyone else could because jam, 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 jam bag. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Oh, they're so cute. They're so happy. It's like metallic gold. The inside has this like beautiful thing. It's my second ever vinyl fronted project bag and I love it. I haven't started using it yet. I just stashed some of my uh, freebie chart finds in it. So um, I will show you a few things that I got from the freebie table. Um, let me see. Nope, not that one. Okay. Uh, so a few things I picked up. I'm sure there are more somewhere. I don't know. Um, I got this fabulous little uh, Prairie Fairy by the Prairie Schooler. There was another one that was, um, I think this one, yeah, this one's like sunflowers. There was one that was like autumn-y. Uh, so Mary has that one and we're gonna, we're gonna like stitch them and treat them because we're cute like that with our traveling sweatshirt. And then this one I just really liked the look of. It has a lot of like, it's not really black work, but kind of like backstitching work. Um, this little Jardin Privé Carré. I love a nice monochromatic piece They make for great travel projects. And um, the back it shows, it's stitched in a couple different colors. So like the model on the front is stitched in 310, but it shows like, oh look, you can do it in any color. And you can also do it in any color you want to. And it says the color of your choice. So I just thought that was pretty and cool and like a cute little something. I think that would make a really nice exchange piece. But I already have my StitchCon exchange ready, so not for that. Um, and then 
this was, I think, the thing I was most excited to find on the freebie table, Plum Street, Penny Autumn. I love it. I love the colors. You can't really see. It's got a giant white house. That's going to be a nightmare to stitch. Um, and it's just pretty and autumnal and it's, I love it. So that's going in my, like, get that up soon pile. Um, then this is another, this is actually black work because Mitch Stitch brought her black work mermaid that she just finished. Oh, look at you. Hello, Baba. He's so cute. Uh, she brought Marina, and she's just stunning. So it makes me really want to try um, a full blackwork piece. But they tend to be really large pieces. Um, like Arlene has some blackwork designs, and they're gorgeous, but they intimidate me. And I know I can just stitch a part of it, and I'm sure there are other small blackwork designs out there, but I'm easily intimidated. Um, but then I saw this little chickadee. <laughs> oh, he's so cute. Uh, and it came with a piece of, it looks like, oh, it doesn't look like Ada. It looks like 28 count. Sweet. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to throw that in my stash. This would also make a really cute little smalls exchange. We'll see. Uh, and then another monochromatic-ish piece that I just thought was really cute and pretty and <laughs> would also make a nice smalls exchange. That's going to be my new thing for anything that's like five by five or smaller. Um, it says Midnight Medley, the 17th of Frida's Fancies, which I've never heard of before. Um, oh, it's a Canadian designer. Oh, can you see that? Uh, and so it's stitched in Karen Water Lilies. And so I thought, oh, this is Impressions by Karen. Oh, this is the other one I got. <laughs> Here it is. Um, I think this is one, I forget. Um, it's this really nice variegated blue and like that on like a nice cool fabric. Ooh. Uh, so I just thought that was pretty and simple and nice. Uh, and I think that's all that I grew. Oh no, I picked up a couple magazines and flipped through them and I ripped out one pattern that I really enjoyed, which is this, um, spool tree, spool Christmas tree. And I just thought that was really cute. And it would also make a nice little smalls ornament exchange. I cracked myself up. Um, so yeah, I think that was about it. There may be a couple other random things. Oh, I did get like a, there's a skein of most sale floss somewhere around here. Um, I did at one point grab, oh, let's talk about this. This is a, this is a good story. Um, at one point I grabbed a, what did I do with it? So let me back up. One of the projects I took with me um, because I knew it would be easy to work on and uh, counted for homework for I forget what and was close to a finish was this little witch house by Barbara Anna. I don't think I had started this when I showed you last. I might have showed you the chart. I got the chart from 1884. Oh my goodness. It's so cute. It's so cute. Uh, so this is stitched on Exotic Orchid Lugana by Wichelt, and I started with some of the called for colors, like I think the house, the, the outline of the house is called for, and then I actually looked at the colors, and it was all, it was all in DMC, and it was like all browns and greens, like greenish browns, and I was like, that's kind of boring, and Barbara Anna's like got some cute, funky designs, and I was just like, nah. So first I did like a color conversion and I pulled out like a different eight colors. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna stitch whatever I feel like stitching. And so I started just like, everything is entirely random. Some of the colors are chosen because they were, like I had a, you know, strand left over from a different project and I just stuck it in this bag and then put it somewhere in the project. Um, I grabbed a bag, I think I put it back. I grabbed a little baggie off the freebie table that just had like random little like you know a couple strands of random different colors and it was perfect because then I would, I would just be sitting and stitching and I need a new color and I'd turn to whoever was next to me and I would say pick a color and then I'd just stitch with it and it just it turned out so cute I love it so much um it is super tiny everyone was like oh it's so tiny and cute and it it is but I mean it's on 32 count and it's just a really small design with teeny tiny motifs. 
um, while I was at the attic, oh jam, uh, I picked up a few different charts and then I was kind of like, no, these are all just like impulsive, like this is cute, but I don't need to buy it. Uh, but I did find the Arrack of Barbara Anna and I love Barbara Anna. Um, and I did get this witch cat to go with my witch house. And obviously I'm going to make the cat orange for jam. And I might do a similar strategy for the witches. This is like a bigger design. I mean, the finished design is about the same, but like the motif is obviously bigger than these teeny tiny, teeny tiny little witches. Um, so I don't know if I'll convert the, the rest of the colors, but I, I want to get another piece of this fabric. I definitely thought this was going to be a bigger project because uh, I definitely could have fit both of these on this single piece of Lugana, but whatever. It's fine. Um, so I absolutely love it. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna finish it. I'll probably wait till it's been like two years from now. It's fine. Uh, and then I finished another project at StitchCon as well. This what I was also using for a homework assignment. Um, and I also forget if I've showed this or not. Um, oh, it's so cute. This is Tea Keeper by Kathy Barrick. Um, this was a chart that I received as a gift from my lovely roommate at StitchCon last year, Laura Ellis. And I love this piece. I found this random linen in my stash. I, I don't know what it is, but it's like a 28 count. And it's kind of like mottled and it looked like perfectly, it looks like it's tea dyed, even though it, I don't think it is. Um, and then I just converted the colors based on things that I thought were pretty. Uh, it's mostly color and cotton and a couple of Victorian motto. Uh, and that's obviously my jam conversion. I gave her a top knot and I love it. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, how I'm going to finish it. I got to figure that out. Um, so that felt great to finish two projects and especially two projects that I was like, cool, just like mixing up the colors on. Um, that was a great retreat strategy that I will keep in mind for the future. And let's see who else is in here. Oh, um, so at the attic I bought that witch cat pattern. I got a couple skeins of floss that might be in here. Yes. Uh, I got some, some black crow. That's not a good picture of it, but this is m my favorite behind storm clouds. Um, it's just a lovely bluish blackish color and I bought it because I was going to maybe put it into the tea keeper piece and I ended up switching it to a different color um but I you know needed a skein anyway so it was fine and then I got another color maybe know what this is I this is not the bag I was talking about bag of random colors this is a different bag of random colors but I really have no memory of picking this up so I hope I didn't like take somebody's project no I think it was just random colors um, there's some really nice greens nice variegated things I'll find something to do with that for sure I was trying to find the other skein of floss that I bought there it is um, I got Fisherman's Wharf because San Francisco, it's a brownish grayish color. You can't really tell. Um, but picked that up. I, that was another one I almost put into my piece and then didn't, which was fine. Uh, and then we got a little free gift with purchase because Stitch Nanigans. And so I got a little quarter gauge, which is super helpful because I've never had one of these. And I've always thought, I can just eyeball it. It's going to be fine. And it never really seems to work out too well for me. So this is it's good to have. Um, oh, and then McKenna gave me a little jam. <laughs> oh, love my cat. Yes, I do. Where'd he go? Oh, oh, he's giving himself a bath. So thank you, McKenna. Um, and then the first, was it the first night that we were there? I got in on Wednesday because if I'm going to travel for a retreat and take time off work, I might as well like fully maximize my time. And so there were a group of us who got in Wednesday afternoon and then we were just like sitting around at the hotel um, stitching away and we ran into Lori, Organic Granny, and Cheryl, the Wayside Stitcher, and I think that was it. I mean a few other people arrived but 
those were the two that we like actually like hung out with that night. Um, and Lori was, maybe this what didn't happen at this time, but Lori was talking about, um, this handy little creation that she found and she was like, oh, I could have invented that and you still could, I would still buy it from you. Um, but it's this really handy little fabric gauge that she got, um, I forget what, what she said, but she was talking about it and then she like came up to me the next day and gave it to me and it was, I was diagnosing fabric all weekend. It was so much fun. Um, it's just this little, little nice clear plastic card. It's like the size of a credit card. Um, and it has a fabric gauge on it. So you like line up this bottom line with the thread of the fabric and then you count up 10 stitches and wherever it hits the line is what count it is. So it has all the different counts and it was so handy because yes, you can like figure it out for yourself. Um, but it's kind of obnoxious to figure it out for yourself. Uh, and this was way better. And so thank you very much. I've used it a lot already. I'm going to really try hard not to lose it. Um, it's really flimsy. So I've been keeping it in its little case here, but I need to figure out a good spot for it. Um, ooh, maybe I could just like tape it to the inside of my like bin of fabric because it's a fabric gauge. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. I think that's about it as far as things that I got in Arizona. Maybe, oh, that's my working copy. I said I was going to organize things and there's no organization happening down here. It's just gotten messier. So that was faulty thinking. Oh, well. I'll clean up later. Um, what else? What else? I took Anna Forest Grew with me and I stitched on that a little bit. Um, even though it's a massive project, I just pulled one page out and then I pulled like six or seven colors. Like I, I went to like the two big motifs on that page and pulled those colors so that I could work on it really easily. Um, it turned out to be a great idea, but I just kind of defaulted to other projects instead. Um, and then I also took, I took like six projects, um, and I worked on all of them to some extent, except for moon dance. Um, but that was okay. I don't know what I did with the rest of them. I did tea keeper on the plane. Oh, I brought another one. I didn't touch. I, ha I have like a monochromatic piece an ink circles piece that for, for the Lee, uh, you can kind of see it there. Um, which I was going to maybe also do on the plane, but on my ride back, I just took a nap because I was tired. Um, and I started this in a hoop and I tried to do a little bit of in hand and it didn't work. It didn't look good. Uh, so I need to put it back in a hoop, but luckily the amazing Diana, it is kismet, uh, messaged me and asked if I had ever replaced my princess hoop that I broke tragically a few months ago and I said no well actually I did replace it I bought a new one off off of eBay um but the tension is it's no good oh it's actually is it right here yeah um so I bought one off eBay but can you see that gap that's the sign that um I mean I don't know if that's the sign but uh it will hold your fabric but it does not really do all that much for you. So if you like stitching without a lot of tension, this is the way to go. Um, also Diana, look, they were the same size. <laughs> so that makes me super happy because I did really love the size of this one, but it, the, ten attention, the, the tension was atrocious. Maybe I'll include this in my next giveaway. Cause some people like stitching with a little bit more give to it. Um, and if, if that's you, then you might really enjoy stitching with this. I like to have it tight as a drum, which this one can do. And thank you so much, Diana. You are the best. Um, this one cannot. So we'll see. I might just, I might just sell it. Sorry. I'm not made of money, you know, which is I try to pretend. Um, so I'm going to put this hoop in here. And now this project is ready to go be a travel project. Let's see, let's see. What else do I have to share with you? Um, 
you know, that's just random stuff that needs to be put away. Maybe that's kind of it. Um, I would show you and a force grew, but it's up there somewhere. And I also have a new start that I haven't revealed yet. I put, I showed a picture of like the few stitches I have put in. And if you are on school of magical stitches somewhere in a homework assignment or an extra credit assignment, you can see my progress. But other than that, it's pretty minimal. Um, did I show this already? I feel like I didn't, but I'm going to, I'm just going to show it and maybe I already showed you. Sorry. Um, I restarted my color and cotton subscription, which I love because her colors are gorgeous, but also I love it because it's super easy to update your subscription settings and you can set the intervals to monthly or bi-monthly, which is super handy because I can't afford to have it all the time. Um, so this month I got fabric and next month I'll get floss. Brilliant. Uh, and this month is this lovely pixie linen and it's this beautiful purple. I don't love purple. It's probably one of my least favorite colors. Um, at least like this kind of purple, the, the, the one that the witch house is on, which is kind of like a muted color. That one's different. Um, so I haven't decided if I'm going to keep it and sew on it, stitch on it, um, or if I'm going to sell it or give it away. But it's such a good deal. It's like 13 bucks plus shipping, minus shipping, not minus, but with shipping. I forget. It's like, but it's like $15 uh, and you get a, a fat eighth or you can get more and it costs more. Um, I have the 32 to 40 count linen package and I think I have it set to like any color. So a couple months ago, don't know where it is. I got this really beautiful light green, kind of like a sage green, um, and now this beautiful purple, which is beautiful. I just don't think I will stitch on it. So we'll see. Um, what else? Is there anything else that we need to talk about? No, I just need to organize my life now. So thanks for hanging with me. Um, Jam's back in his window. He likes to look out the window and then he gets a little tired and a little warm. So he comes over here and gives himself a bath and then he goes back to the window. He's so cute. He's so cute. Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna clean up our mess and, um, that's it. That's all, that's all I got. I hope you have a wonderful day. I will talk to you all sometime soon. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe not till StitchCon. Hopefully before StitchCon. Um... I'm sure I forgot lots of things, forgot lots of people, love you all. Oh, I didn't even talk about like who I all, I've mentioned Michelle and Michelle and McKenna and Arlene. There were a lot of great people at Stitch Nanigans. I'm not going to name you all, but just know that I love you. Um, that's all I got. And I'm excited to see many of them again at StitchCon. I'm also going to be at the Arizona retreat, or sorry, uh, New Jersey retreat. <laughs> Uh, I think next year I will not be going to all the things. This year was a special treat to myself because, just because, um, next year I will have to make some decisions on what I'm going to do. Uh, I've got a lot of sewing plans in the works. I've got a lot of stitching plans. I need to de-stash a little bit to focus on what I actually want to stitch on. Um, but like life is good. So holler at me if you're going to be at StitchCon. Um, a fabulous, fabulous stitcher who I met at StitchCon last year, Andrea. Andrea, right? Not Andrea. Is it Andrea? I have two friends in my life, and one is Andrea and one is Andrea, and I can keep them straight, but then any other person I meet, I just can't. I can't remember it. I'm really sorry. Um, but go watch her video. You can find out how to say it. She just started a channel. She uploaded her first video, The Stitchy Bookworm. She's super cute and adorable. And she's going to be at StitchCon next year. And she has a lot of really cute literary themed shirts because she's like studying library science. So she's, she's legit. And uh, she has the best shirts ever. Jam! So Jam and I send our love. Go check out The Stitchy Bookworm and other people. I'm so helpful. All right. I love you. Goodbye.